Sleepy Hollow Season 4, Episode 12, tomorrow. Now, this is an interesting episode. We, of course, have uh, Henry coming back to life because the ooze ends up touching the um, Horseman of War's blood, so that recreates him entirely from Ichabod's memories. And we, of course, have Ichabod being transformed into the Horseman, so we get to see that play out and conclude in this episode, which really surprised me. I was honestly shocked that it ended so quickly, but of course, it was a simple way to do it where it's like, okay, Ichabod gets taken over, but of course, they, they're able to free him, and then there's still someone to take his place, because we find out by the end of the episode that Henry was evil the entire time, even though he made it seem as though he was actually a good version of him. And I thought that was interesting. I was like, you know, it'd be cool to see a good version of him. It would be like when he showed up in the beginning of the series, except we know all the facts now. And we get to the end, and it's like, man, we lost our horsemen of war. Of course, Dracus is upset. And then here comes Henry. He's like, hey, kind of how's it going, pretty much. And I'm like, man, he's just, he's just evil. He's always going to be evil. That's just the way it is. So he's going to be the horsemen of war, which means although Dracus's plan changed, it will still ultimately play out as it initially did. He will still have the four horsemen. And it was just cool to see. I was like, I like the way that that ended because, of course, it still allows for the villain to have his ultimate goal, but it also allowed the heroes to not only save Diana, uh, which future Molly did in the last episode, but they were able to still end up saving Ichabod by the end of this episode. So still a totally different future, but we still have both heroes uh, surviving now, and so we have like the whole team plus future Molly helping them out for however long that lasts. I thought for sure... Uh, when she first got cut by the horseman when she's inside of Crane's mind, the first thing I thought was, oh, this is the episode where she dies because they have a future character and they, you know, that always happens. Any future characters that tend to exist, for the most part, I don't think I've personally watched a show where anyone from the future lives through the entire series. They always end up dying at some point. And it's like, oh, you live through that crappy future, you go back in time to try to fix things, you fix that ultimate thing that you were supposed to fix, and then you die a little bit later. That's just the way it plays out, so... I thought that was happening really early on, but she survived this episode, so we'll see her go on. Like, I, I personally don't believe she's going to make it through the entire season, which is unfortunate, just because it's a cool concept to have a character, you know, two versions of the same character, one being young Molly and one being future Molly, alternate future Molly at this point, but I just don't think she's going to survive the entire season. I would love her to, because I think they'll just be cool, but... I just don't see it happening. And plus, I'm pretty sure her name comes up as, you know, guest star. And they could change that if she does survive the whole season. They could make it where she does stay on as a permanent uh, part of the show. But that's for the future. We'll see what happens with that. But I like the way this episode started where we see the original future and we actually start off with Jenny teaching these kids, um, you know, a different lesson about Dreyfus. And they had, you know, the artistic uh, drawings and stuff about how he destroyed freedom and he, you know, screwed up everything pretty much and he took over and then we have the four horsemen riding in which I gotta admit was a pretty cool sequence to see all four of the horsemen just riding in and we see the headless horsemen for a minute and we see pestilence and war and death uh death had most of the focus really in that opening scene I'd say it was uh death and war because of course war was initially Diana so that was pretty cool and death is you know riding around with the big scythe and stuff and I was like that's pretty cool we see Jenny using a couple of different uh, magical weapons she uses, like the weird, um, it looked like it was supposed to be like a uh, staff, but it was just like really tiny. So she's using that and it basically creates, it was almost like a Ghostbusters type of thing. It was like she was kind of pulling it off the horse. And then we see like the little blade that is so powerful or so magical that it can pierce through any sort of material, which I thought was pretty cool. So we get to see that work and she cuts the mask and that's what allowed Molly or Laura at the time and she still likes to be called Laura, even when she uh, talks with the other characters in this episode. But it allows her to see that Jenny was telling the truth, and that Dreyfus had been lying to her the whole time, and that her mother was uh, the horseman of war. And so she saw that, and it just threw everything off for her. So, of course, that's why she jumped into the past, and she saved her mother. And then it's like, crap, you know, we lost Ichabod, so I don't know what the future's going to hold. But it was pretty cool. I enjoyed seeing that for sure. I was like, that's a, a cool insight into the future. And now it makes me wonder if we're going to see any more glimpses of the future because that was a future that was. It's not the future that is. So I'm looking forward to how that's going to play out. Maybe young Molly will still have uh, visions of the future and we'll see how the initial version of the future that we had glimpses of, 
how that's gonna be altered now that uh, Laura, you know, has come back in time and actually saved her mother, and they've been able to save Ichabod, although, like I said, saved all the good guys, but the villain still has his ultimate plan uh, in motion. So I'm looking forward to where they're headed, but I think they did a really good job with this episode as far as, you know, showing us the future and how Laura got there. We even get some more explanations as to how everything played out. It wasn't as simple as, you know, she finds out that her mom died and then boom, that's it. It was like, you know, her mother dies and then they go looking for her father who ends up being, uh, I think she said MIA, so he's missing in action, I killed in action. But after that, she doesn't have any actual family. So of course, you know, Ichabod and Jenny and the rest of the gang, they can't just be like, oh, we'll look after her. It's, you know, she goes into the system for years and years bouncing around. And that's when Dreyfus ends up finding her as if he's her savior from living the crappy life of being a kid thrown into the system. And I was like, that's interesting because, you know, it, we saw how it started before where he just randomly talked to her. And then he had a much smarter plan afterwards. I was like, okay, get rid of her mother. I would assume get rid of her father as well. And then that forces her to just be sent through a chaotic system. And then he comes in as, you know, her dad. So I was like, okay, we got to learn how that... Uh, played out, you know, over time, and then, of course, that leads to her being kind of uh, indoctrinated a little bit and being lied to all this time by Dreyfus about, you know, all the actual good guys and how they, they're terrorists and things like that. So it was cool to get that bit of insight as to how she was manipulated from, you know, a teenager to being an adult working under Dreyfus. And I'm excited to see where they take uh, the future version of this character and if they'll decide. I'm sure they will. But I'm excited to see what they'll do as far as young Molly and future Molly being in a shot together and just how that ends up affecting uh, the younger version of the character. But good episode for sure. Very excited. Uh, I can't believe they brought back Henry just so he could actually reclaim the mantle of war. That's just really funny to me. It was like, he comes back, might be good. He ends up being released by Job. And then it's like, yep, yeah, um, I'm actually the rightful owner. So, you know, my dad's out. I'm back in ultimate power let's kill everybody and it's like wow just nothing but chaos from that guy but we'd love to know what you guys thought about this episode so please comment below let me know your favorite parts and least favorite parts and things are about to get a, a bit intense i would imagine especially with the fact that they still have you know their horsemen and they're still going towards uh getting four horsemen they still only have like three officially so you know, they're kind of going towards that, like, the other two are healing up, so they technically have, like, one in, like, two quarters, I guess, because the other two are still down, um, death, you know, death is down, war is down, or no, death is down, pestilence is down, war, uh, which, okay, so I mentioned this before, that I thought the Headless Horseman was war, but they said that he was death. But death was in this episode. I didn't realize that when I was watching it until just now. They had the Headless Horseman in there, but they definitely had, like, death running around with a scythe. Like, that has to be death. So I'm confused now as to what the Horseman, the Headless Horseman is, because I thought that was war. So I'm super confused now that I think about it, because I was like, that was definitely death. Rolling around, black robe, big scythe and everything, so... I don't know who they have. That I, I didn't think of that when I was watching it, but it just really confused me because they definitely said in the last episode that the Headless Horseman was the, the Horseman of Death because I was like, oh, I thought for sure it was war. Just that it decapitates people doesn't mean it's death. So that just confused me now that I thought about that. Like their imagery, they should probably switch that up a little. But I believe Pestilence and Famine, I guess, are the ones that are still getting up to full strength and so the headless horseman having been wounded they had to you know summon the hessians to kind of give him more power in, within his totem so they've got one kind of and then we'll see i would assume that uh with henry having been the horseman of war and everything it'll almost be instantaneous he'll just be like boom i'm the horseman of war and it's you know he's at full power automatically so they've got one for sure in the next episode and then I'm assuming that the Headless Horseman will be good by the time we roll around to the next episode as well. So, running into some crazy stuff, but I definitely want to know where you think the next couple of episodes are headed as far as the Four Horsemen and Dreyfus' plan and how the heroes are going to somehow stop the Four Horsemen and stop, you know, Job as the Super Demon and Dreyfus as the Immortal. So I would love to know where you guys think these next couple of episodes are headed as far as good versus evil and the horsemen and our heroes. 
all that stuff, I would love to know your speculations for it. And of course, I want to know what you guys thought about this episode in general, so please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.